In this video, we will talk about the basic components of a cybersecurity program. In a previous video, we gave an overview of the basic principles found in a cybersecurity plan. In this video, we will begin to talk about the actual specifics and what a security program should cover and the steps to create one. Specifically, we will be talking about controls. NIST SP 800-30 defines risk as the net negative impact of the exercise of a vulnerability considering both the probability and the impact of occurrence. Risk management is the process of identifying risk, assessing risk, and taking steps to reduce risk to an acceptable level. Risk is comprised of some type of threat taking advantage of a vulnerability that exists on an asset that you possess. In another set of videos, we talk about performing a risk assessment to identify possible threats and vulnerabilities. Once you have identified risks to your system, it is the job of controls to mitigate those risks. Controls can be broken into three categories, administrative, technical, and physical. These correspond to the different ways of dealing with risk. Each has their place, and in most cases, you will have to develop controls in each of these areas. Oftentimes, it is easy to get overfond of technical controls, but you should always bear in mind these might not always be the best solution. Sometimes it is easier to just lock a door rather than develop an advanced detection system with monitors and cameras. According to the United States General Accounting Office Federal Information Systems Controls Audit Manual, the control environment sets the tone of an organization, influencing the control consciousness of its people. Controls can be thought of as performing the following actions. Risk assumption. To accept the potential risk and continue operating the IT system or to implement controls to lower the risk to an acceptable level. Risk avoidance. To avoid the risk by eliminating the risk cause and or consequence. That is, forego certain functions of the system or shut down the system when risks are identified. Risk limitation. To limit the risk by implementing controls that minimize the adverse impact of a threat's exercising a vulnerability. That is, use of supporting, preventive, and detective controls. Risk transference. To transfer the risk by using other options to compensate for the loss, such as purchasing insurance. Administrative controls are the process of developing and ensuring compliance with policy and procedures. They tend to be things that employees may do, or must always do, or cannot do. This is the category that your policies and procedures fall into. One important control that you should put into place from the very start is that of regular reviews. A good security program is a living document. Regular risk assessments should take place, and reviews of control that are currently in place need to be performed. Make sure you also develop policies on training and awareness for your staff. Technical controls are another class of controls in security, and these are carried out or managed by computer systems. Security methods consisting of hardware and software controls used to provide automated protection to the system or applications. Technical controls operate within the technical system and applications. These are probably the controls you will think of first. Controls in this category are things like firewalls, antivirus, access and identity controls, and system monitors. Remember to consider configuration management and disaster recovery when addressing your technical controls. When considering technical controls, it is helpful to perform some type of cost-benefit analysis. Is the expense of the software or hardware needed to implement the solution going to outweigh the cost of the risk? If you are looking at a $1,000 intrusion detection system, you might have to ask yourself if it is really worth it if the risk assessment identified the monetary cost to only being a few hundred dollars. Also, consider technical controls that can address multiple risks. 
Physical and environmental security controls are implemented to protect the facility housing system resources, the system resources themselves, and the facilities used to support their operation. In most CI project cases, these controls will mostly focus on employee safety and protecting servers. Often, these will be taken care of resources outside the project itself. The campus probably already has security in place for protecting employees and the extent of your responsibility will be reminding them to be careful. Servers that you are using can often be placed in campus or departmental server rooms that will address many of the controls you need to worry about. However, this is not always the case. Make sure you look at your servers and equipment and identify controls that need to be in place for limiting access and protecting against natural issues such as fires, floods, or spills. In this video, we have looked at the various types of controls used in creating a cybersecurity team. In following videos, we will cover the other steps in creating a security program. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF. Grant number OCI 1234408.